Okay. Hey guys, it's Phantom, and welcome back, or welcome to my channel, for another episode of Let's Talk. So, I know I already covered piracy, <laughs> but, um, I know I already covered video game piracy, but I'm here to cover it again because this is an issue that, well, okay, so this video is, or this episode of Let's Talk is talking about the Sims and piracy in general. Um, so guys, like, honestly, um, so I have a lot of issues with piracy in the Sims community with people um, wanting to get the game for free, um, trying to hack people, you know, ha trying to hack, um, origin users' <laughs> accounts to get the game for free. It's not getting it for free. Um, it's basically stealing. Um, and piracy is against the law, if you don't know. If you guys don't know what piracy is, um, if you don't know what piracy is, piracy means Piracy when it comes to video games or anything really is basically stealing your um video games. Um piracy in video games. So not a lot of people understand. Okay, so there's like so this is referring to video game piracy. Um, it's a form of copyright infringement. So, um, you guys know how, exp like, if you guys are, um, Sims players, you know how, you know how expensive the games are. Uh, like, you know how expensive the games are. And, like, it's, it's well over a thousand dollars um, all together, like, plus the stuff packs and kits and all that stuff. So, I'm on Wikipedia. I know it's not that much of a reliable source, but, okay, so basically how this all started, I'm just trying to, like, warn you people if you're trying to, like, hack people's origin accounts, um, or if you're trying to hack into people's origin accounts, um, and like, play The Sims on their accounts, or if you get, like, crack versions of The Sims, but mainly I'm talking about the people that hack other people's origin accounts, or whatever. So, just to warn you guys, <laughs> since video game piracy is, or just piracy in general, is so dangerous, um, so basically, on Wikipedia, as I said, Wikipedia isn't always reliable. It's a form of copyright infringement. Video game piracy, a form of copyright infringement. If you don't know what copyright infringement is, it's the unlawful use of works without the author, like, um, like the person's permission, the, the creator's permission. Um, it's a form of copyright infringement. Video game piracy is the unauthorized copying and distributing of video game software. It is often cited as a major problem that video game publishers face. Um, this is a major problem. If you guys don't know why, it's because when you pirate something, 
um, like, you know, download it illegally or get it illegally, um, then you're taking money away from companies like video game publishers. Okay, so for example, The Sims is pirated a lot. Um, I'm very against piracy to get the games. Um, seriously, if you want the games so bad, go out and get them. Like, save your money for it, go out and get them. Um, you know, be smart about it, don't don't put yourself in that situation. And also to the people that think hacking other people's accounts is smart, it's not. You're basically, you know, you're getting their information, like their, you know, like their passwords and emails. You're, you're basically hacking people and you're basically hacking people and um, locking them out of things, which I'm very against. Um, mainly because I got hacked once and it was a very scary experience. Um, it was a very scary experience, so I don't recommend um, trying to get The Sims for free, or any video game for that matter for free. Um, I mean, basically, the only games you can get for free on Origin, at, like, actually get for free, um, and it's not considered piracy, um, are, like, if they're having free deals or whatever on games so oops, yeah I'm I'm typing it right I'm sorry I'm tired um free games so basically the only games on origin you can really get for free um, well, hold on, let me turn on, um, let me turn on window capture here, oops, let me turn on window capture, origin, so, the only games you can really get free on Origin, like actually free, is, is certain games if they're available for free. But you can't really get it for free. Like, let's, let's click the buy now. So this isn't actually So you can like so they have um so they have um author not authors offers <laughs> they have off offers to play games for free and then you can buy it um but basically like, if they're having, I don't know, promotions or something. Or, like, where they do it monthly. So, basically, with this game, you can play for free, but you, but to get the full experience, you have to, you have to pay for it. Um, so, basically, the only game that I got for free, the only game I actually got for free was, um, Apex Legends Season 8, that was free. Um, they actually had it for free, so I was able to get it free. But pretty much everything 
pretty much like expansions and stuff you have to pay for it I don't know why I don't know why it was free like I don't know what they're um like what they were doing basically but um let's let's just look at okay there's also other issues with like pirating video games as well um not just that it's not only is it illegal but um let me actually fix this real quick um okay you guys can't see that you guys can't see what i'm doing so um like not only is piracy and hacking people's accounts wrong and technically illegal um but there's also other problems there's also other issues when you um try to pirate games so i think i looked it up hold on i think i looked it up so Basically, you can get in serious trouble. Um, I know this isn't, I know this isn't, this video isn't really related to, so I basically watched a lot of Okay, so let's see. Yeah, um, so there's videos on this on like how to get them for free. Hold on, let me switch. YouTube if I can um so there's like you know there's obviously a lot of videos talking about how to get the games for free how to do da 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 like how to do all that and I'm like don't do that because I'm sure there's gonna be like a lot of problems um so I'll probably like copy the links and stuff kind of talked about this a little bit in my sims faq video um but don't do this or or you know what maybe maybe we should watch this the real problem with pirating games. Um, and and why piracy will never die. Um, by Tech Quickie. If you don't, if you've never heard of Tech Quickie before, it's it's a channel. It's I guess it's a collab the collaborative collaborative channel. I'm sorry, I cannot talk. It's a collaborative channel with um Linus Tech Tips and a couple other people. Um piracy there are a lot of different opinions some data points to the idea that pirating games actually leads to further legal buying but with a high margin of error it's hard to place much but yeah it's basically copyright infringement faith in it. other studies have suggested that piracy in the games industry severely impacts developers and publishers but it does it like i'm very against it <laughs> i'm very against it a lot of people 
don't, a lot of people don't understand that it hurts developers, publishers, um, it hurts people that actually, you know, bought the games or whatever, or like whatever, I'm not just referring to, well, I am referring to The Sims because it's pirated a lot. I, um, like, there's videos all over, all over the internet talking about how to get The Sims 4 for free, how to get The Sims 3 for free, how to get Sims 1 for free, you know, how to get Sims 1 for free, and I mean, there's even things on eBay where it's like, where the price is like really low, it's like really cheap, and you basically um, hack into other people's accounts that have the game and play it that way, and it's like, no, that's not okay. With that assertion, an overwhelming majority do not believe that a legal crackdown is the answer. Even developers themselves, who would largely be regarded as the victim in a scenario they would be, wouldn't? Yeah, they would be because they're they're making the money. Um, you know, they're the ones that helped create the game. Plus, the person that actually created all the Sims games, um, Will Wright. If you guys don't know who he is, he made the Sims. You know, he made the Sims in two thousand. Um, you know, like nineteen ninety nine. Like, the 90s through 2000s, he started the Sims franchise from the, from the, uh, from, like, Sim City to the Sims. He's the one that created the Sims, and Maxis is one of their developers, um, Maxis and EA are one of their developers, and it hurts and it also hurts the people working for the you know it hurts the people working for the sims team it hurts um it hurts the people it hurts the employees working at maxis it hurts the creator it hurts it hurts the consumers that actually save the fun you know save the funds to buy the games um, and all that. I'm very much against it. I'd say if you want The Sims, save up for it. Um, know what you're getting into. If you want The Sims, save up for it. Know what you're getting into. Um, and so on and so forth. And go out and buy it. And and compare prices because some I don't know like some some packs are more expensive than others um but yeah definitely compare your prices that's that's a smart thing to do like just be smart about it where piracy has a negative impact view the solution to be an advancement of retail practices rather than a stricter enforcement of anti-piracy laws I've thought about what angle to go for in this video quite a lot, because the truth is, piracy is a complex subject. I am mm -hmm. of the mindset it's a decidedly negative thing for the industry. Yeah, I have to agree. But not because of traditional claims. Rather because it builds a stronger platform for journalists or publishers to stand on as they push forward with practices that negatively impact the consumer. Contrary to what some yeah. sources would have us all- Like, it hurts- it hurts the consumers, it hurts- No. It hurts the consumer, it hurts it hurts pretty much everyone involved. I believe piracy is not just a simple criminal act perpetrated by greedy gamers who don't want to give fair compensation for the products they consume. Mm -hmm. That is perhaps one of the most shallow and disingenuous definitions out there. Instead, piracy is used in a multitude of ways, depending on circumstance. Sometimes players will pirate a game simply to test if they wish to truly purchase it or not. In a world where betas and demos are now often being sold as pre-order gimmicks, the traditional methods of knowing whether or not you even want a game are becoming less accessible. As a I mean, I wouldn't really do that either. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know, there's so many issues with pirated copies of games, like, you know, there's bugs, there's bugs, there's glitches, there's... There's issue, you know, there's a bunch of issues, so I don't really know. Result, some players will pirate a game, and then...
and then actually purchase it should they like what they see. Another reason players pirate games is to protest certain behavior. In light of the Epic Store pitting itself against Steam and resorting to timed exclusivity as their- I mean, okay, not everyone- not everyone, um, likes EA. <laughs> not everyone, um, agrees with EA, so that could be why they pirate things, but still, piracy- piracy is wrong, um- Piracy is wrong. You don't know what you're getting into. Um, pirated copies could have viruses um, and all these other problems. Like, they could have glitches, viruses, um, malware, um, all that, all that stuff. Like, basically, cracked versions of games is considered malware. So, I would be careful if I were you. Um, Primary tactic. Many players are resorting to piracy as a method of avoiding the Epic Store entirely. It does not work for every single game, but it's something I have certainly seen talked about in video comments and all over social media. Now, to be fair, I'm sure there are some players who just want things for free and do it to avoid pain. Yes, but in all my years as a video game enthusiast, I have not encountered a- Yeah, that's, that's what happened to me. I literally got a comment about that and i'm like i don't agree with that a single person who pirated something with the express goal of holding back fair compensation for quality products if they were otherwise able to pay for them with such a wide range of motivation it's hard to really say with any degree of certainty that video game piracy is a bad thing for the entire industry but i would like to make the case that it absolutely is because it is used as a spearhead in a deliberate attempt to shift the overton window the Overton window, for those that don't know, is a term referring to the range of acceptable practices in public discourse. Mm -hmm. Applied to the video game industry, the Overton window can refer to the range of acceptable monetization in major titles, and it has been shifting gradually for many years. I've covered the topic of progressing trends but, many- I mean, okay. Co like, branches like the Sims, okay. How much is the Sims franchise worth? Let's see. Hey Siri, how much is the Sims franchise worth? Okay, I found this on the web for how much the new Sims movie has worth. Check it out. Okay, so the Sims franchise is literally the most popular franchise in the world right now. So, um... I'm reading here that the Sims franchise has made EA over five billion dollars. Um, the Sims series. Okay, so EA's annual financial report indicates. I don't know how old this is. Um, oh, this is. Mm, this was done last year, um, or this was updated last year. So. Y'all, the Sims franchise, according to this article, um, tweaktown.com, um, the Sims franchise has made EA over $5 billion. Um, EA's annual financial report indicates the Sims series has surpassed $5 billion in lifetime sales. Um... So, Electronic Arts has a recent financial report gave the public an insight in how the company is doing and how some of their titles have shaped up since their release. One of those titles is none other than the Sims franchise. You know, I, I already stated how successful this franchise is and how expensive it is um it's obviously worth more than it's worth way more than um what i had first stated but that was because i didn't put like the stuff packs or the game packs and the kits and i didn't include the kits yet um so one of the ace titles you guys don't know, EA is the company that's 
I guess, distributes it or something? I don't know. Uh, I have to look, I have to look that up. So, one of EA's titles that the company was proud to show off was Apex Legends, um, and how it has now reached 70 million players and is still growing. EA CEO Andrew Wilson also went out of his way to talk about a classic EA franchise, The Sims. According to the CEO, Sims 4 is going strong with the company reporting a 40% growth in monthly player count during 2019. Wilson also mentions how much money The Sims franchise has made EA since the first game's release back in 2000. Now, The Sims is 21 years old now, I believe. Um, yeah, The Sims franchise is at 21 years old, I believe now. Um, not 20, not 20 years old. Um, Wilson also mentions, okay. Engagement across the franchise has led The Sims to surpass 5 billion in lifetime sales. Um, the Sims continues to be one of the great franchises in gaming that we all have plans to bring new experiences to its amazing players for a long time to come. In other news, The Sims EA the Sims EA is about to release a brand new DLC pack. If you guys don't know, DLC means downloadable content pack for The Sims 4, where players will be able to take their Sims back to university. This is Discovery University, is what they're talking about. Um, this DLC pack is basically an expansion pack, but you download it because it's it's all basically the expansion packs now are all digital barely any of them have cds um that you install on your computer it's all digital so you put the code in and it downloads um so that's what they mean by dlc pack we'll let players decorate their dorm rooms party Go to classes and much more. Check out the trailer here. The Sims 4 Discovery University. Expansion pack will release on November 15th for PC and November 18th for consoles. Um, so yeah, it's made it's made EA a lot of money. Um, for how popular it is. And because it's so popular, that's why people pirate games, because it's so popular and so expensive. Um, I don't recommend pirating games or movies or anything like that. You can get in serious trouble if you're caught, basically. Um, yeah, I... I wouldn't do that. Like, if- okay. I get, like, The Sims 2 Ultimate Collection back in 28, you know, like, back in 2014 to 2018, but that was, um, for promotional reasons, and you had to show proof that you owned the um, base game, so basically you had to call Origin. Basically how you got the um, expansion packs and stuff packs for free um, for The Sims 2 was you had to call Origin tech support and, or like Origin support, and tell them, you know, Hey, I have The Sims 2. Hey, I have a, a physical copy of The Sims 2. Um, are you, you know, like, and ask them if they're still doing the promotion for the ult for the Ultimate Collection. And then they send you a code, 
and you enter that code and you get the and you get the Sims 2 Ultimate Collection. Um, like that was the only way you could get the games for free, or like you know you can get the packs and stuff for free. But usually, usually if they're not doing a promotion, then you can't really do that. And also, another way to get The Sims for free is if you enter a giveaway and you actually win the giveaway. Um, but yeah, technically you can't get The Sims... Technically you can't get The Sims games for free unless people are doing... Unless people are doing um, giveaways for it um, or own basically for giveaways how it works is the company um basically someone contacts the company or like I guess you'd have to be I don't know an EA game changer or something um also there's the thing with EA game changers um basically how people get free copies of the packs or, or like free copies of the packs early is there's this um program called EA Game Changers and if you don't know what EA Game Changers is um I've talked about it before not really EA Game Changers so if you don't know what EA Game Changers is it is basically um okay I don't know if they're still doing signups um for it but hold on let me let me show you let me turn off youtube for a second um let me turn off youtube for a second let me just go ahead and okay so ooh. So I didn't mean to do that. Um, okay, Game Changers. If you don't know what EA Game Changers is, um, it's basically a program for creators. Um, so, sorry if you can't see the whole thing. I'm trying not to cover the entire thing. So basically what EA Game Changers is. EA Game Changers Community Partnership Program. So it is a partnership. EA Game Changers is a partnership with EA and it's there. Okay, so it says it's EA's Community Partnership Program that fuses content creators and expert players directly into the game development process, enabling early collaborative feedback for improvements. We also empower innovative storytelling by granting creators early access to, to gameplay capture. Also, um, sometimes EA Game Changers have the um, privilege to work on the games, um, you know, to work on the games as well. Um, and they go out to things like Sims Camp. Okay, what is Sims Camp? I've heard of Sims Camp, but I don't know what it is. Is it like for creators? Okay, Sims Camp. So, I have no idea what Sims, what Sims Camp is. Um, okay, so... If you guys don't know what Sims Camp is, Sims Camp is a thing for game changers. So it's invitation only. Sims Camp is invite only and for game changers, driven by global community manager. Um, it was driven by Sim Guru Kate before me and Sim Guru Drake before her. Sometimes the 
team that deals with big celebrities might ask to bring a few people or PR, um, PR means public relations, might ask to bring some media. Um, so basically to get into Sims Camp, to get involved with Sims Camp, you have to be an EA Game Changer. Um, you know, you have to sign up, you have to do all, you know, you have to do all that. Um, you have to do all that stuff. Um, I don't think they're... Um, letting people sign up right now because of things going on um But yeah, that's basically the rundown of EA Game Changers and Sims Camp. Okay, so. Hold on, I'm so sorry. So let's go back to YouTube. Hold on, where is it? Okay, there it is. Let's go back to this YouTube video. Hope I'm not filming for too long. 36 minutes. Oh no, that's, that's too long. Oh no. Um, where, where is YouTube? I can't find it. I can't, okay, there it is. I found it. So I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see. So yeah, we're back. At one point, the first ever microtransactions were on the very edge of the Overton window, and as such, they were met with criticism. But now, that window has shifted, and the exact same practices are hardly even considered. At this point, people may be wondering, but what does that have to do with video game piracy? And the answer is fairly simple. Video game piracy as a concept gives those with a deliberate intention of shifting the Overton window a foothold to gain traction. Since we've established that the majority of affected parties do not believe in legal framework adjustments to combat piracy, but rather in pursuing alterations to retail structure, we have to consider what those adjustments are. A common solution that helps eliminate the possibility of game piracy is online-only authentication. Another tactic is high-security DRM, or digital rights management. But some major DRM services and programs have begun to reach large file sizes as they try to reliably outpace the hackers. A side effect of this is that the game performance can be impacted in a negative way, and at the moment, combating piracy from a technical standpoint seems to be a losing battle. Even in a losing battle, however, tactics like online-only authentication have started to negatively impact average gamers, where once you could spin up and play any game you wanted to, regardless of high-speed internet access, and that's of course excluding things like MMORPGs or similar titles, they aren't really applicable to this, now, even many single-player titles require a constant high-speed internet connection and are routed through multiple third parties, any one of which could restrict your access to the product that you paid for. Accursed Farms has a wonderful video about this very subject, in which he makes the case that games as a service are fraud, because it is a good being sold as a service while adhering to the legal framework of neither classification. It's a fantastic video, and I'll link it in the description down below. But the tie-in for my point today that I'm making now is that video game piracy is a motivational factor behind the rise of online-only games as a service. Alongside this emphasis on managing game access, there is increased monetization. Now, there are many, many different reasons why games have started to increase the scope of their tactics when it comes to squeezing wallets. That's actually been going on for quite some time. But one of those reasons is piracy. 
With upwards of 35% of PC users engaging in game piracy, it seems obvious that companies would start to try and make up that difference through other methods. In the relentless pursuit of bottom line increases, if a large chunk of the available market is pirating a product, the response is to then monetize those that aren't to an increasingly high degree. The issue, though, is that another huge motivational factor behind video game piracy is poverty. Players right. often pirate games because they love games, but they don't have the money to pay high prices for con- I mean, yeah, but... Still, you shouldn't do that. ...content that may end up only containing a few hours of fun, if any at all. As stated earlier, sometimes they are even forced to try games almost blind since hands-on gameplay testing is barred behind full-price pre-orders or special editions. As companies react to piracy and other industry factors- Or in this case, EA Game Changers, um, they get the copies early, basically, and They get the copies early to test it, and um, then they film content, and they film sponsored content with it, um, and post it to YouTube for their YouTube channels if they have one. Um, the program does partner with content creators, so. by squeezing the players that do follow the legal framework, they end up increasing the number of players that then ignore that same framework. It is a cycle that only has one direction, and it's not a positive one. Still another problem comes from gaming news media. I joke about how gaming journalism is terrible and mainstream reviews are often paid for trash, but the truth is that a lot of people still read the material and are influenced by its message. In the modern climate of gaming, hate clicks and outrage views are a very real thing. I would be lying if I said I have not capitalized on it before. Some would say that's all I am as a creator, and I disagree with that, but the most popular content in the gaming space is content that elicits a reaction, and it's hard to come up with meaningful content on a regular basis that that elicits a positive reaction, but it is exceedingly easy by comparison to come up with controversial or provocative material that spurs viewers to click or read through it through a sense of animosity. Mainstream gaming journalism, in large part, bites into this by attacking its own audience or painting gamers as the enemy while attempting to gain further insider access as they cater to the agenda of larger publishers, which then in turn leads to exclusive interviews or gameplay sessions, which are another source of guaranteed clicks and revenue. Video game piracy is like loading the gun for them. A lot of industry professionals like journalists, CEOs, COOs, etc. want to paint gamers as the enemy. They want to have a credible justification for the tactics and direction they already employ and pursue. Pirating games gives them that justification. As the Epic Store grapples with Steam, CEO Tim Sweeney makes enemies on the ground floor, that is to say, average players. As some of those players advertise that they will now go pirate games because of Tim Sweeney or the Epic Store, he can then say, see, look, I was right to prioritize developers and publishers instead of consumers, because gamers are vile little shits and they do illegal things to try and avoid using my platform. When gamers openly pirate games, it builds up a case for the parties already degrading the industry. It mm. increases their motivation to keep doing it, and it allows them to justify that behavior and shift the Overton window, which is what they have been trying to do all along. Now, I'm not trying to say that anyone out there who pirates games should just silently do it, though if you are going to do it, yes, it's best to be silent about it. What I really want to say is that we need to be more articulate as to why we pirate games and eliminate the possibility of companies or decision makers using it to advance agendas that are bad for the player base at large.
It's been widely accepted that the concept of piracy isn't going anywhere, and depending on how you interpret the data, it may even be a good thing, in direct contrast to what most in the industry might say. But the optics of game piracy right now have turned into what is damn close to a propaganda tool to justify things like online-only authentication, increased monetization, and subpar digital launchers. Mm -hmm. If we can cut down on the unnecessary instances of piracy and also redefine the way it is perceived, it can help curb one of the many factors that contribute to industry degradation, as well as possibly improve the... Yeah. Relationship between developers, publishers, and gamers. I want to be clear here. I'm not trying to say that if you pirate. Sorry if I'm not talking much. I'm trying to listen and pay attention to what he's saying. For games, you are a bad person or you are wrong for doing it. There are usually complex motivations at play, anyways, so such a statement would be worthless even if I believed it. But the recent uptick in proud, vocal, but unexplained or improperly articulated piracy is only serving to hurt the industry by helping to justify much of the things that drove you to pirate the game in the first place. I spend a lot of time blaming publishers and developers for various instances of wrongdoing, but there is a broader scope to the industry than just that. If players themselves can establish a position wherein the large companies producing content have no foundation to stand on as they pursue increasingly predatory tactics, it will be a large step forward in the effort to undermine and dismantle those same tactics. I doubt that this video will make much of a difference in that category, but the message may resonate with some viewers. If you are able to support a game that you enjoy, do so. If you pirate a game to test it but then thoroughly enjoy the material, purchase a legitimate copy if it is within your- Yeah. Don't- don't go and pirate or hack people or- or download it illegally. Purchase a actual copy. Um, oh, also, don't purchase used copies either because apparently, if you get a used copy, this is okay. This is why I don't like used copies. Um, okay, problem with used copies is everything comes with CD keys, right? Um, everything comes with CD keys. The Sims games come with CD keys. So, um, the reason why you shouldn't get secondhand games is because, especially now, the, the codes won't work. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be authentic if you get it used. Um, I mean, sure, it's in good condition, but... Sometimes the codes aren't going to work correctly to install the games, and that's not really a legitimate copy if it if you bought it used. Your means to do that. If you were about to say, that's why I pirate games in protest of the Epic Store, whether it's on a video or social media or whatever, maybe type out another sentence to explain why you dislike the store and would be happy to support the artists behind the game, but are left with no method to express yourself since the Epic Store has enacted a near scorched earth. Right. I mean, he's talking about a different video game publisher, but I kind it's kind of the same thing. He's referring to a different game publisher if um, if you don't know what Epic Games is behind, they're behind um, GTA, they're behind the GTA series and a bunch of other games, but mainly they're known for GTA. For the tactic of um, exclusivity to force players into using their platform. At the end of the day, piracy isn't going anywhere, but we can emphasize proportionate and tactical responses to various different issues, mm -hmm. which is far better in the long run than knee-jerk reactions. But that's it. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. We have Merge, various different communities, and this time around, I'm very, very interested to know what the community thinks of video game piracy. So let me know in the comments down below, and hopefully we can have a really good discussion there. But yeah, right. I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night. Okay, so I'll put a link to this in the description. Obviously, as always, so I'm going to copy the link so that I can do so. And okay, so another
video that I wanted to watch. Oh wait, no, not that one. Uh, another video that I wanted to watch. Um, how long is this? Oh, it's 53 seconds. I mean, this could be, this could be a good one, um, kind of to warn people. It's, it's only 53 seconds, so. Or 52 seconds. We bring you the answers to all your questions. Be better than others. Enjoy the benefits of knowledge. Accept the answers from us. It might land you in legal trouble, just like illegally downloading music and movies. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it could land you in legal trouble. Um, Dealing so, video yeah. games via piracy is a federal crime in the United yep. States. Punishment. Yep. Yep, this is true. Um, piracy is a crime, so as I said, when you pirate video games, especially... When you pirate games like The Sims or any game in general, you're breaking the law because it's not a legitimate copy. You didn't buy it. Can range from so yeah, like don't don't hack people. Don't like don't hack people. Don't um don't do that. Like don't hack don't hack people accounts don't uh like don't hack people's accounts don't download torrents don't download bit torrents um that's that's another way you can pirate video games don't do that um yeah don't uh hack people's origin accounts and don't download BitTorrents um and don't go on certain websites where you can get the games for free because that's piracy that's basically piracy and it's illegal paying back the copyright holder to spending time in jail mm -hmm. Our mission is to provide accurate answers. We think, without knowledge, it is impossible to live a balanced life. Be competent. Be skillful. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. No. So, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, oh, and also, don't get games on G2A either. I... I don't know how I feel about G2A. I've never really heard of G2A. I don't really, uh, I don't really think you should go on G2A to get, uh, to get games either. I just don't think they're very trustworthy. So that was pretty much it for this episode of Let's Talk, and I will see you all in my next video. Remember, don't pirate video games, and don't pirate The Sims. Go out, go out and get a legitimate copy so that you don't get into that type of trouble. If you like this video, Please like and subscribe and comment um, and 
I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys!